This has definitely been one of my more challenging videos to film. Here goes attempt number three. Hello YouTube. What you see before you is the BIC uh, America Formula 12 subwoofer, otherwise known as the BIC F12 subwoofer. This subwoofer has been often lauded as a very good subwoofer for its price. Kitty, my cat's gonna help us out today. That's Angel. And I would say at around $200, yes, it is a very appealing subwoofer. Before we get into the review, uh, let me just talk about its features. So you can see right there, it has a 12 inch woofer right here. Now it looks like it's metal, but you can maybe hear that, you can tell. This is just shiny plastic. It looks nice, but it's metal. I mean, sorry, it's plastic. And then it has a pretty thick uh, butyl rubber surround here, better than what I've seen on a lot of subwoofers. Not as good as what I've seen on some, but those generally cost more. Uh, I don't know if you can tell real well, but it does have a bit of a wood grain finish. Uh, the front is more matte, but I will pick you up and move you and you can see. I got you on a gimbal, so hopefully it's not too bad there. Um, up on top is definitely more of a wood grain type of finish. And then while we're up here, I could try to kind of get you back here. It's in the corner of my room, so it's a little difficult to get to, but there is the connections. You can see my speaker wires going in there. That's as good as I can get it, really. Um, unfortunately, it's stuck in this corner, and it's all connected, and I just didn't want to take it all apart. All right, so we'll put you back there. And this has a 150 watt RMS, 475 watt peak amplifier, which I think is one of the highest rated amplifiers in its class. Um, some competition with this would definitely be the Klipsch R12 and R120 subwoofers. They're about the same size, around about the same price, maybe a few dollars more, uh, 30, 40 bucks more, but you can get those on sale for, you know, around about the same price. Um, but they're, both amplifiers are only rated up to 400 watts. So this guy's got a little bit bigger amplifier. I don't know if it's um, that much of a difference, but it's rated a little bit higher. And the frequency response is rated down to 25 hertz in room. I think it can get down there, but um, how close? Well, we'll save that part for the actual review. So this subwoofer's assignment is to outperform the competition at its price point. And we're gonna say that's a $200, well, let's say two to 250 price point. What it gets right is I think design, it's a very well-designed subwoofer. I like the looks of it. Even though the woofer is fake metal or plastic, I still think it looks cool. Um, I can, show you real quick here is the beefy grill that goes for it uh, i usually keep it off because i like the way that the woofer work looks but i mean this thing is thick i don't know if you can tell by looking at it it's it's a thick boy it's heavy too i mean you can do some real damage with this if someone breaks into your house and it's got these uh peg style connectors i don't know how long those will last but you can see oh no i guess i'm not missing one but they're better than some I've seen. They're definitely plasticky, so that's that. It is what it is. But it's a nice grill. Uh, if you want to put the grill on, like you've got little kids around your house like a poke on things, probably not a bad idea. I do have a cat, but she generally leaves things alone. So that is um, the design, and, and for that, I think it is a very nice looking subwoofer. It also has a nice feature set. One nice feature that it has is not only does it have uh, uh, LFE in input, I didn't, you can't really see that, it's kind of hidden back there, but it also has speaker level input and output, which is supposed to enable a crossover, more on that later. And it has a nice feature set, it also has a defeatable crossover switch. It says LFE and, what does it say, say 5.1 and stereo, I think is what it says. So 5.1 uh, disables the crossover and stereo enables the, the crossover, you, you got that switch. Um, and then it also, it has your, your typical phase switch, a frequency a low pass filter, and then your volume knob. 
So a nice feature set for that, I gotta give it mad props. As far as the audio quality, man, you, you can't beat it for its price. I have heard subwoofers that cost more that don't sound as good. So for that, yeah, it really sounds good. Uh, it's a little bit boomy, but not too bad. There is a nice size Venturi port on the back of it. Um, and so it definitely is ported. It's gonna give a little bit of that ported sound. It might be a little bit more airy or boomy, but it's not terrible. It's, it's a well-designed port. It's gonna be better than you know an inexpensive Dayton or Monoprice sub subwoofer that's just kind of got a hole thrown th up on there. It's a little more uh, well designed than than that as well. It should be costing a little bit more, and so it really does produce nice tight bass. Angel, don't knock over my phone. You better not. Get out of the shot, cat. And uh, yeah, it does. Really, especially for um, two channel listening. And then what does it get wrong? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is that I cannot, for the life of me, get the crossover to work. This is my uh, ELAC debut B5 version one speaker. And uh, I have two of these are connected to Emotima Base X A100 Mini X. Actually, it's the Mini X, not the Base X. Excuse me. Uh, amplifier had that guy for a while. There's the other speaker over there. Anyway. When I play audio through this system, these speakers attempt to play all the frequency range that is being asked of them by the um, song. So there's no cutoff between the big down here and the speaker. But by the way, I'm using my new gimbal. Let me know what, what you think. Hopefully you get a little better stability. Also using a, um, a new microphone. This is the, the Boya BYM-1. So. Hopefully audio is sounding okay. Anyway, crossover doesn't seem to work. I couldn't get it to work, so I'm not sure what's up with that. So that's something to keep in mind when considering this sub, if you really need that, that crossover feature. Um, the second thing this, this gets wrong is that the volume knob seems to have a point where it really jumps in uh, SPL. When you just move it slightly, it makes a huge jump in, in decibel level. And that's kind of annoying because that is right in the range where I need it to um, be set. And so if I set it one direction, it's a little too low and just go a little bit further and it's a little too high. I don't know who, who designed that volume knob, who programmed it, if it was like a cruel joke or if they just didn't know what they're doing, what, but yeah, it's got definite issues. And, and so that's something to keep in mind. Now I got it to work. I just set it a little bit lower than I need. Actually, it's probably is where I need it. I just like to run my bass a little hot. I'm a, somewhat of, of a bass head, but I don't want it to sound unnatural. And so um, I think it's actually pretty good where it is, all things considered. But if you need it just a little bit higher, not a lot of bit higher from where I have it, you might run into some issues. So keep that in mind. And the final uh, thing it gets wrong is the frequency response for home theater. I'm going to give it that little caveat right there because I think for two channel is just fine, or at least sorry, for two channel music it's just fine. Most two channel music uh, doesn't hit much below 30 hertz um, unless you're listening to like let's say some uh, pipe organs or uh, ele electronic music that has synthesized bass then it, then it could. By the way, if anybody's listening to pipe organ music, please give a shout out in the comments and what do you listen to? But anyway, for most music, for the music I listen to, that's fine, but for home theater, I really want it to hit below 20 hertz. It just, it barely hits 25. It does hit 25, but I think it's starting to reach its minus three decibel point as it gets down to that part of the frequency range. And so it does hit 25, but just, just barely. And so for home theater, that's not low enough in my opinion, especially if you're just going to use one, uh, I would maybe look at something different. Although, if your budget is $200, I don't really know anything better. I would just say, if your budget is $200, save up some more and look at something from HSU, or sorry, SHU, or from SVS, because those are going to give you more home theater performance. And this brings me to the frugality grade of this subwoofer and for stereo music i'm going to give it a b plus i really believe this is the area in which this sub excels especially for the price it is a great value proposition for a 2.1 music listening system uh, i have it here in my office 
in the corner and it's amazing. It's probably a little more than I need, but I like having the overhead. And if that's what you're looking for, you've got $200 to spend, look no further than this guy. It's not gonna be the prettiest sub out there and it's not gonna be the smallest, so keep those things in mind. If you're wanting to go with pretty, then you know, you're gonna have to look at something like Yamo's got some nice options, uh, Focal, but those are gonna cost you quite a bit more, especially the, the Focal. Um, you can get the SB1000 in white, but it's, I think it's $600. It's gonna be a lot prettier, probably kick a little bit lower, but it's gonna cost three times as much. You can get three of these guys, have an awesome setup. Anyway, yes, that's, that's my recommendation for music is you're on a $200 budget, you don't care about the looks, get this guy. For home theater, I am going to give it a B minus. For me, it just doesn't quite kick low enough to be considered a real uh, option for home theater. Now, the reason why I didn't give it a lower grade is because in the $200 range, you're not gonna find a whole lot better anyway. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are considering this, this subwoofer. Um, it's, it's not gonna kick low, but most don't at this price range. I mean, you could look at the Klipsch R12 and it's, uh, I think it's rated down to like 28 or 30 hertz. So it doesn't even get as low as this guy does. So now for my recommendations. This is a great choice if you've got $200 to spend uh, on a sub for a 2.1 or a home theater system. I think um, if you have the space for it, you don't mind the looks, it's great for a 2.1 system in like, let's say your office or even in a, a, a living room. Again, you can get by with the looks. Not the prettiest thing ever, not so not the ugliest. Um, and then as far as home theater is concerned, there's not a whole lot of better choices in this price range. Like I said, you can look at Dayton or, or Klipsch. Yamo's got some, they're definitely pl prettier, but I don't think they kick nearly as low as this guy. You're looking more at the 35 Hertz range. So that's something to consider as well. I, I think it gets the deepest of any subwoofer in the $200 price range. And if you got a $400 price range and you're looking at maybe um, the RSL Speedwoofer or the one of the SVS subs on, on sale, I'd say get two of these guys instead. It's always best to go duals. My recommendation is always to get two lower cost subs as opposed to one that uh, is the entirety of your budget. So think, think about that. Uh, in, in some rooms, having two might actually sound better and go lower than having one better sub. It's something to consider and uh, I would highly recommend consider thinking about that when you're looking at this subwoofer. So I thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, by the way, I'm using my new microphone as well as my new gimbal. So let me know what you thought about that down in the comments below. And also, if you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe and consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Links down in the description below, as well as to this subwoofer and a couple of other options for you. Those will mostly be Amazon affiliate links. So I appreciate you using them. I get a small commission out of those, if you don't mind. And uh, also, I'll link to some of the gear that I'm using to film this. Remember, frugal doesn't necessarily mean cheap.